So a lot of churches and Christians and pastors portray God as this big, angry, judgmental, punishing man in the sky. You call Jerry a dum-dum? Don't you dare insult my Jerry! Clap! Thanks for smiting me! Who's going to light you on fire forever if you don't do what he says. And not only do I disagree with that interpretation, but I think it lacks context. But it's also about what is the culture of the environment? See, if you want to understand God in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, you need to ask yourself a question of context. There's this great bit that Chris Rock did back in the 90s about this exact phenomenon. You don't need pulp. Some people don't eat pork for religious reasons, which I think is dumb. See, people, don't, people don't, don't realize, like, religious books were written by man. You know, like, 5,000 years ago, before there was Reynolds wrap, before there was refrigerators, before there was freezers, before there was seasoning, a pork chop might kill you. The when, why, and to whom the text was written really influences how you understand it, and that's what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show coming to you not live, but pre-recorded from my front room, AKA Kindred Studio A. My name is Chris Hayden. I am the pastor of Kindred UMC. My name is Anne and I'm the treasurer for Kindred UMC. My name's Taylor and I'm the resident uh, gay non-binary exploring candidate that just happened to burp, so I'm so sorry if you heard that out loud. My bad. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, tr we're trying not to burp into the mics, but the mics are now attached to our sternums, so it's hard not to make a sound. Um, we are in our second week of the Ten Commandments. We are looking at the Second Commandment, as you may have deduced. Um, so the first. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the first one, please go check out last week's video. And uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. OK, so we're reading from Exodus chapter 20 verses four through six. I think Yes, six. Yes, six. OK, four through six. They sound like this. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water or under the earth. Uh, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, which we'll talk about what that means if you haven't watched last week's, uh, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Here's, here's where it gets rough, okay? We're going to talk about this, so stick with me, but it does get rough here, okay? Uh, I, the Lord your God, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. So there's the second commandment. Uh, how, how would you sum it up just based on that? Don't idolize people or your great, great grandkids are screwed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Don't idolize people or I will screw up your whole family tree. Whole family. Well, but <laughs> yeah. it wasn't just people. His materials, animals. Yeah. Right? Anything. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is true. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, well, I wasn't right. sure what you meant. Uh, uh, yes, the idols. Yeah. He's specifically, and that's an interesting observation, specifically of yeah. land and sea and air. Like there's, there's specific references to those types of things. So, so what do you make of that? First of all, my pastor growing up got some explaining to do. Two of them, actually. I, I shall try to fill in as best I can on their behalf. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a weird thing, but like I can think of like my grandparents, like the Great Depression era, where like you kept everything just in case, right? And there's a little bit you didn't necessarily idolize it, but like there were certain things you took extra special care of because like you couldn't hurt it. Does that make sense? Yes, I. Yes. And so like the, I have things. Like, uh, my great grandmother's cast irons are one of them. Yeah. Do not put soap on those. Exactly. Yeah. Like those couple You're of things. With it. Yeah. And, like, I yeah, think and they're heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a healthy level of like, no, no, that's special. Like, don't drag it through the dirt, please. But then there's also a level of like putting it, it on the pedestal. Thing. Right, right, right. It is yeah. just a thing, keeping yeah. it in check. And I think that there's. You're, I think you're getting down to like, what do we mean by the word worship? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, because that's the specific rule. Do not worship idol. Don't make an idol and don't worship them, basically. I guess like I always get confused because I was never ex ex like explicitly told what the difference between like a role model is, an idol, a mentor. Like I was never explicitly told like, those are the categories. Yeah. So like when I think, like when I was told don't idolize, I always was like, oh, am I not supposed to have like role model? Like, am I not supposed to like yeah. look up to people? So, because all right. So that let's- That feels wrong. Let's start there. Yeah. Let's start there. So some, some history. Okay. So the way that pagan uh, worship worked, which is the, the culture that this was written for many, many, like thousands of years ago, um, there were, the, the way that you would worship a pagan thing was to have an image of it probably in your house okay. or that you carried around and they worshiped like physically observable things so for example there's a psalm you may have heard of it if you've been around the church at all but it basically said it's uh um i lift my eyes unto the hills mm -hmm. where does my help come from I'm such a sap. <laughs> this, is a, this, this is more powerful when you understand what's going on here. I lift my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, mm -hmm. maker of heaven and earth. People used to look off in the distance and they would see a mountain and they'd be like, that's a God. Mm -hmm. They would worship the object. They might encounter a creature that they'd never seen before, and like, this is a god. Mm -hmm. Like, look at it. Look at an elephant. You, if you've never seen an elephant, and all of a sudden you see an elephant, you're like, what is going on? Right. You know, like it's what the crazy. Hell is that? Yeah. yeah. So like, so that's this is this is the roots of like naturalistic pagan worship. Mm -hmm. the, the, they would look in the distance and see a mountain. This psalm is ultimately saying. You look in the distance and you see a God. You know what I see? My help comes from the maker of that. Mm -hmm. My God made that pound of dirt over there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, so like there's something braggadocious about that Psalm, but it is, it's also rooted in this commandment. We shall not worship the creature. We shall worship the creator. We're not, we're not going to worship uh, Ugh. We're not going to worship the thing. We're going to worship the maker of all things. So there's something in there too. Before we continue, I want to remind you that we, for, this, for the foreseeable future, are collecting funds for a group called Zoe Empowers. They quite literally empower communities with skills and entrepreneurial uh, education to make their own businesses and make an economy and a living in their own community. We've been assigned a community in Rwanda and every dollar you give to this channel goes directly to helping those people. So please use the QR code over here or any of the links down below, or you can mail a check PO box down below to Kindred UMC and all of that will go to the help to help the people in Rwanda that we are getting to know as we speak. So let's continue. Uh, before we get, I've, I've got a little analogy I want to talk with you guys about, but before we do that, let's get mm. some of the difficult language out of the way. Uh, the punish to the third generation, fourth generation versus steadfast love. First of all, what do you make of that? How does that make you feel just hearing that? That feels like more the God I grew up learning about. Can you say it just in case this is the only video? Because um, I know what you mean, but I don't think some people might not know what you mean. Like I grew up in a very like, God is mad and uh, you're not doing what God is wanting you to do. Um, so you're screwed. Like if you don't act. Yeah, sinner, sinners in the hands of an angry God yeah, kind of it's, a thing. It's very like, you have to follow his laws or you're going straight to hell. Yeah. Or like you have to do that and not decide. just you, but your kids and, and your you, kids, right. kids and right. Yeah. And like your dog, Every, yeah. everybody's going to hell. Okay. Um, that's I, how yeah. I grew up. It was very like, and it, I, I think it you, I think you're, I think a lot of people can identify yeah, with that. Yeah. Well, it wasn't until very recently as in like maybe three or four years ago that I started like learning that God's actually the opposite. That's 99.9% .9 of the time. That is my faith and um, belief. Right. Yeah. So that is, that is when I came back into the church is when I started to learn that. Because yeah. I left the church for a long time being like, why am I going to believe and follow somebody that like, I heard is a, essentially an asshole. I heard a great, um, he, he was an atheist and he was arguing with a Christian and he basically said, 
His question was, okay, if I said to my wife or my child, if you don't love me, I'm going to light you on fire. Right. Would that be evil? And the, the guy was like, yes, of course. And he was like, so if you don't love me, I'm going to condemn you to hell is any. He, and the guy was like, no, here's what you got to understand. You know, like, yeah. uh, and and this this guy did not make good points after that. But yeah, that is not an act of love. Right. It's not an act of love to be that way towards people you claim to love. Right. And we all inherently know that. Right. But why are we talking ourselves out of that inherent knowledge that we all have that I believe that knowledge was placed there by God, by the way. I believe God placed inherent knowledge that that is not love right. in each of us and trying to talk ourselves out of it is an act against God's will for our lives. That's my belief. So um, anyway, so, so here, did you have anything? Because I kind of skipped over you. I didn't mean to. No, you're okay. The only thought that I had, as you said, like getting into the meat of it, was I'm a jealous God. Yeah. Mm. This perfect creature, of, and like, but and we've seen the anger, and we've seen some of the things, but like, jealousy exists in there too, huh? Yeah. Isn't that um one of those seven deadly sins, by the way? <laughs> I think I read that's it Catholic originally. doctrine, not necessarily scriptural. Oh, well, seven deadly, the seven deadly sins are not listed in scripture somewhere as seven deadly sins. They made a really great flogging Molly. Song, right. Though. And the, the movie seven is incredible. So yeah, see? I think when I hear jealous, God, I hear like more of like a I want you less of like a less of a creepy jealous. More oh, yeah. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Overprotective more, girlfriend. Right, right. Not like that, but more like, I just want to be around you. Like, Not I just obsessive. Want you to choose me. It's like, yeah. that's more what I hear it as. Like, yeah. almost more like you want to go I hear over it there more fine. graceful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, pick your parent, but and like, I, I want you to choose me. And some yeah. of this is translation issues. Some yeah. of this is like trying to find the right English word to represent the mm -hmm. idea behind the Hebrew word. And so some of that, some of that is lost in translation. Uh, I am a jealous God. So here, here's what I would say. Again, going back to the history, the idols and pagan worship and the understanding, like, so pagan worship is born out of, we need the crops to grow or we will die. How do we make God make it rain? How do we make the God of our, sorry, my nose is very, very You're itchy. Johnny Appleseed um, an even amount of times. Well, so what, what, what ultimately came out of uh, we need it to rain, we believe that gods make it rain, was sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so they would start to take some of the corn that they harvested and burn it. And then it's like, oh, it didn't work this season. So we must, we're constantly trying to chase after and please the gods. And that led to an understanding that the gods of the world are petty and do not care at all about right. the lives of human beings. So that's the starting place of the Hebrew religion. That's mm -hmm. the starting place of, of Christianity. That's, mm -hmm. that's our beginning, okay? So if I change the inflection a little bit, it changes just a little bit of the different understanding. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I will punish the sins up to the third and fourth generation. But I am a steadfast, I'm, I'm abounding in steadfast love, blessing and forgiving to the thousandth generation. So it's, if you read that super literally, it doesn't make any sense at all because like the immediate question is, okay, so what if the dad's really good and then his daughter, the second generation is really good and then her kids are like really snotty and bad? Well, wait a minute, based on these two, shouldn't God be blessing to the thousandth generation? Mm -hmm. But now these ones are bad, so now the their kids are bad. Like, so right. now it's cursed and like punishment. But only for a little bit, and then it goes. <laughs> yeah, so so like, it, yeah, if you get legalistic about it, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense at all. And this is further evidence that you should not read the Bible literally, and people who do read the Bible literally will always miss the point of the Bible. Come at me, bro. So there's the thumbnail. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, there are certain parts that are literal, but we have to make interpretive choices. So obviously the, our choices now are either the people who wrote and read this originally are idiots who don't understand how anything works because that doesn't make any sense at all. 
Or we can take them seriously and be like, no, this is a deeper mystical understanding of what's going on. People already understood gods to be petty, who would punish the sins of the father by punishing the children, you know? They already understood that as the reality. This is like the Ten Commandments are acknowledging like, I know you understand gods to be this way and you should take me seriously. I am a God that created everything. Mm -hmm. You should take me seriously. I am a jealous God. I, there are consequences for not obeying my law. Mm -hmm. But we always skip over that last line, mm -hmm. abounding in steadfast love, forgetting, forgiving to the thousandth generation. And this is a culture without computers. Thousand may as well be infinity. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and, and there's also some Hebrew numerology involved. Like thousand was higher than you can. That's why, if you ever heard the reference of the 44,000 uh, or the 144,000, uh, that's numerology. Thousand meant, further than you could ever count. No one could ever count to a thousand. So when you hear thousand in Old Testament scripture, think infinity. So it's like, yeah, I'm a God. You should take me seriously. I, there are consequences for breaking my law, but I will, I will bless and love you to infinity. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what's going on here. He, the writer is using a, a, a context that the people would have understood to say, yeah, you like, there's some seriousness and some teeth to this, but you can, you never need to doubt the absolute infinite grace and love of this God. So don't make any idols. Don't worship the creature. Don't worship the land and the sea and the air. Don't worship that. Worship me. So here's, here's the analogy I wanted to make to try and help, because it does still beg the question of like, what, why is God so concerned about like statues? You know, like mm -hmm. why is God concerned with idols? So uh, this, is, this is a picture from my wedding day. Uh, what does, I'll ask you guys, what do you see? What do you get? What is this? You have hair. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> there, wa there was a time long long ago yeah. when i had hair that's true it's your wife uh, i was gonna say your wife's hot you, but yeah, you, yeah. yeah she she's she's a very <laughs> sexy lady. uh you know who that is right yes. right you, it's a, yeah she, yeah you know her by a nickname <laughs> yeah uh and you know who this is yeah yeah do you know where it is in a, no in a church it is in a church. It's, it's the first church that I was appointed to in Eustis. Gotcha. Um, it's the first church I was appointed to in Eustis. Uh, it's when we first got married, of course. Uh, we actually had been married before this. So because we needed to move into uh, our parsonage, basically, it wasn't a parsonage, we had a, but you, we, and we, we, weren't allowed to live together because of rules, you know, um, without being married. So we actually got married technically in my friend, my friend's living room. Mm. She's an ordained elder in the Presbyterian church. Uh, she married us in her like kitchen basically. And that happened like a month ahead. And then this was the actual ceremony where all of her friends and family could be there. The reason we did that is because her family half lives in Taiwan and uh, and like uh, her brother was about to be married too. So like getting the weddings to be like the one weekend's our wedding, the next week's, weekend's their wedding, and that way everybody can be there. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, so this isn't really our, our marriage technically, but it, it was our wedding. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this picture also is when we moved into this house, this was my gift to her. So I, I had this framed and, um, you know, like professionally yeah. done. And, and when we moved in, my wife and I to our first, like this is the first house we owned together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I gave her this as a gift. And then also just the attitude of it is fun. Yeah, you know? it's very you guys. Um, yeah. How much of that did you not know because of what I had to explain? When I see it, I feel and see all of those things. Yeah. Right. How much of it did you not know? At least half. At least half, yeah. 
Because I feel like I knew a lot of it. I just didn't. Maybe. But, but, but I don't but see it. You don't see it in that picture. Right. This is why God doesn't like idols. God doesn't like idols because God is saying, I'm so much more than that. Mm -hmm. You need to treat me like more than that. And if you treat me like more than that, things will go well for you. I won't be like these other gods who are punishing and selfish and, and petty. I will be a God of steadfast love blessing to the thousandth generation, but you have to let me be more than the picture. Don't make an idol of me and don't make an idol of another God and certainly don't worship them. That's what I think the second commandment's about. Closing thoughts, comments, questions, concerns. So role models are not off the table. I do not believe that role models are off the table. Yeah. <laughs> I would certainly be doomed if I didn't have my role models. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, because, like, for me, there was never a distinct difference. Oh, there's a if wild difference. If that makes difference. sense, like, it was never, it was always, like, don't put people on a pedestal. And it's, like, I'm not necessarily... Don't put them on a holy pedestal. Right. Like, I'm not... But my role model is, I think my mentors are a step above me. But not in a not in an equality sense. In a, not like, like a human value. Not, not, not even yeah. that, but like in a my professional mentors. Like you obviously are farther along in your profession than me. Therefore, you are ahead of me. Yeah, respecting in, in elders. Respect. Yeah. Way. And so, also, and, and I would also say, be choosy about those. Absolutely. You know, uh, idols represent gods. So, like when we say the word idol in English, it feels different now. Yeah. Um, you got to remember, idol was this is the representation of something divine. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if I if I can be so bold, I hope that I, you know, like as you said, I like I I think of myself as a teacher and mentor to you. Uh, if you make me, if you idolize me in the biblical sense, of course that is bad because I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to screw right. up. That I, I am not divine. I am right. not perfect, not by a long shot. Um, but if you respect me and listen to me and you know accept the help that I want to give you, then that's not only is that like not bad but that's like discipleship man right like that's, that, that's like that's how so that's, like that's how we do it you know like you know? Like, my life. yeah because yeah. not like and i've got my uh teachers and mentors and right. and people who did that for me and continue to do that because that's why i always thought it was weird because i was like i don't understand how you're not supposed to look up to other people especially in of course you do in, like yeah. growing up or like anything like that and i'm like i never heard the word idol growing up other than in a, in a you're gonna burn in hell if you idolize anybody yeah don't idolize anyone or you're in trouble <laughs> and then i was like but what about role models nobody could ever answer me i'm like okay, well, okay, okay yeah no role models are wonderful and like one of mine is uh paul right the apostle <laughs> you know yeah. and like john wesley the theologian and john legg who is my like actual I living mentor john friend and, <laughs> hey man john I lennon really john did. lennon can teach us a lot too actually i really did i was like give peace a chance that's man that's all we're funny. saying yeah so yes absolutely role models and uh people and teachers who influence you and you admire are not only not sinful uh, but they're, they are a healthy and good part of what it means to live the life that God has given us. So. Uh, my only closing thought is I think I can connect with what you're saying with like everybody wants to be on the pedestal and the idolization of like, especially the pastors. And I don't know how much of it is what's been taught that the congregation should make the pastor the pastor should aim to be perfect. Do you know what I mean? It's like a yes. power dynamic almost. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like, oh no, I don't want that guy up there because he... Well, the, the, and the two things get conflated. Well, and I don't uh, know how much is being fed from one end and so right. it's been learned. And we also have the added fact of... The pastor should try to be perfect. The pastor should try to be perfect. And anyone who believes that the perfect pastor is going to be perfect all the perfect time is kidding themselves. <laughs> like, And especially the pastor who thinks that they must do that uh, or they will lose their privilege, power, authority, whatever, yeah. is a, is, that is a 
dangerous dining. It's not just like bad for you. Damn, mine it's wasn't even trying. Dangerous. Well, and I mean, this is that's how we that's how the church has has done the most harm. I think. I mean, that's how we yeah. get crusades and like uh, I the p word. Uh, th- with that involves yeah. children and assault. Oh, yeah, yeah. That I that YouTube does not like me to say. Um, yeah. Like, it, it's how we get the absolute worst of humanity. Yeah. Is that uh, like that's how dangerous it I is? I just realized what word you were talking about right now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah well, click and see how long that took because that was yeah. a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think we also have a different layer of it because we grew up as women. Maybe. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I wouldn't want you up there. Oh, that you know? Yeah, that well, yeah. Because that feels like that weird con- like yeah. In in the United States, can't be Congresses? perfect. Congress, con- uh, <laughs> uh, congregations, congregations. Congregation. Yeah, you said Struggle. Congress too many times. I, I was did. like, is it Congresses? But congregations <laughs> are like down here, and then like elders, and then like pastors. Like that's how I grew up with a very. Yeah. This is the order of the, how things happen. Right. You know, and and, and well, it's, again, it's like you said. There's nothing wrong with having role models that you look up to, that you listen to, that you go to for help, you go to for advice. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And it gets incredibly dangerous when that starts to intrude on humility. Yeah. When that starts to uh, become to it. like power hungry, when that starts to become privilege and comfort protective. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I ever ask the church to purchase a jet you should run me out on a rail you should tar and feather me like if i ever ask the church to do something like that like i need to be held to account i've gone round the bend you know yeah. um and it's hard to keep that like it's hard to maintain that but again that's, that's why we have these rules that's why there's a second commandment like yeah. do not make an idol that's why do the posters n- exist yeah <laughs> right do not worship an idol do not worship the create the the created worship the creator like that is the point and when we when we do it gets dangerous but yeah. that actually makes a lot of sense like yeah that the way you put that is like what i should have been taught in sunday school like how you just well, said that. I am I am sad that it hasn't been the case, but I'm very glad that it is the case now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Were you practicing? I just, I just mean it. <laughs>